then it was on to Dhaka, where millions of people had begun to crowd the road that their leader would pass and the rest course Maidan, where the leader would deliver a speech before going home. On the tarmac at Tasgao Airport, soldiers of the Indian Army and Mukti Bahini were on standby to present Bangladesh President with a guard of honor. Members of the wartime cabinet waited in the winter sun as did a horde of newsmen. Sometime after 1.30 p.m., the Comet aircraft made available to Bangabandhu by the British government landed in Dhaka. As soon as the doors of the aircraft opened, Bangabandhu appeared. It was clear he had lost weight due to imprisonment for nearly 10 months in a Pakistani prison. A big smile appeared as he swept back his hair with his right hand. Prime Minister Tatuddin Ahmed then moved forward and buried his head in his leader's chest. Both men broke down. Their tears so led to moist eyes in nearly everyone else present around them. Once the formalities at the airport were completed, the father of the nation climbed on a board of an orphan truck with the Mujib Nagar government figures and the student leaders crowding around him. He headed for the rescue. Welcome back to Hidu Insight. I hope you all are doing well and in this video I am going to be talking about Father of the Nation. Welcome everyone in today's video. I am so happy to see you together here. Bangabandhu a few more hours of journey towards home. Please watch this video continuously and non-skip then you have a clear idea about Bangabandhu's a few more hours of journey towards home. Please subscribe our YouTube channel and also like, comment and share if you want to develop your English proficiency. Bangabandhu's a few more hours of journey towards home. Bangabandhu left London for Dhaka on the 9th January evening in 1972. On the way, he would stop over in Delhi. He was welcomed at Delhi's Palam Airport in the morning of 10 January by President Bibi Giri, Prime Minister Indira Gandhi, West Bengal politician Siddhartha Shankar Rai and the chiefs of the Indian Armed Forces. Bangabandhu stayed in Delhi for about two hours. During this time, he addressed the public rally and mesmerized everyone. There he wholeheartedly thanked Mrs. Gandhi, the people and the politicians of India for the tremendous help they had provided to Bangladesh and its 10 million refugees. Then it was on to Dhaka where millions of people had begun to crowd the road that their leader would pass and the rest course Maidan where the leader would deliver a speech before going home. On the tarmac at Tasgao Airport, soldiers of the Indian Army and Mukti Bahini were on standby to present Bangladesh President with a guard of honor. Members of the wartime cabinet waited in the winter sun as did a horde of newsmen. Sometime after 1.30 p.m., the Comet aircraft made available to Bangabandhu by the British government landed in Dhaka. As soon as the doors of the aircraft opened, Bangabandhu appeared. It was clear he had lost weight due to imprisonment for nearly 10 months in a Pakistani prison. A big smile appeared as he swept back his hair with his right hand. Prime Minister Tatuddin Ahmed then moved forward and buried his head in his leader's chest. Both men broke down. Their tears so led to moist eyes in nearly everyone else present around them. Once the formalities at the airport were completed, the father of the nation climbed on a board of an orphan truck with the Mujib Nagar government figures and the student leaders crowding around him. He headed for the rest course. The two miles stress of road would take the procession almost three hours to cover. At the rest course, Bangabandhu weeped, remembering the sacrifices of the Bengalis had made in the war against Pakistan. He told how the military janta tried to intimidate him during his style. He said, I told them I am a Bengali and a Muslim who only died once. I would walk the gallows with head held high. The father of the nation remarked the Bengalis had become the golden children of the golden Bengal. Quoting the poet Robindranath Thakur, who once had complained that 
the people of Bengal had remained the mere Bengalis, but who were yet to become true human beings. Mujib told the jubilant crowd the poet had been probed wrong. Come back, O oh poet, he intoned dramatically, and see how your Bengalis are today transformed into a worthy man. Moments later, as dusk and winter haze settled over Dhaka, Bangabandhu Shak Mujibur Rahman made his way back to his family who had been waiting for him at the house in Dhanmundi Road 32 where they had been kept under house arrest by the Pakistani army throughout the course of the War of Liberation.